Good evening from Plug Kid Studios in Largo, Florida. I'm Scott. I'm Abram. And we are here with episode 513 of uh, F5 Live, Refreshing Technology, for November 18th, 2018. This show is a proud part of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. This week, Samsung wants all your cash, Sony wants a way out, and China wants a virtual anchorman. Wherever you are and however you're accessing our show, whether it be on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Google+, on uh, any of our live stream platforms, including Livestream.com, Mixer, Twitch, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Periscope. Haha, uh-huh, I remembered them all. Uh, of course, on our uh, syndication platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the Podcast Play app in the Windows Store, myriad of others like Stitcher and TuneIn. Uh, you can even listen to us on your Alexa-powered device. Uh, through TuneIn, or of course on our apps, plugkidslive.com slash apps. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Uh, like I said, this is F5 Live, the flagship show on the Plug Kids Live family of content. We are live Sunday nights at about 9 p.m. Eastern on all of those platforms I mentioned before. Uh, there are two ways that you can join us. The first is live at that time, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, in any of those platforms, and you can chat with us in the studio and give us some feedback on the topics as we talk about them. Um, we have a couple of se- seemingly interactive topics this evening, so uh, hopefully people will uh, be in the chat room and give us some feedback. Uh, if you can't join us live, that is okay. You can also, like I said, you can subscribe on a number of platforms by going to plugkitslive.com slash subscribe, and there you will see uh, F5 Live and The Pilch Point, which you'll hear tonight, plus a myriad of others like our special events, our first look series, and more. Uh, so check those out. Abram, how are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Decent. Well, that's good. Uh, getting getting excited for the week. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal at our at our company every year, um, and especially this year that um, the Black Friday season is a big time for people who want buying advice like the kind that we give, and we do a lot of uh, put in a lot of extra hours covering all the deals that are coming and going, the breaking news. Uh, so, you know, we uh, we put a lot of time into that, and then hopefully. It helps people make some smart decisions, but um, this is definitely the time of year where we're putting in a lot of, a lot of extra hours working on holidays and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we're there to help everyone get, uh, get a good deal and um, avoid avoid a bad one, and that's uh, an important thing for for everyone. So, especially the avoiding a bad one. Yeah, you you don't want to feel like a sucker. Yeah. On uh, on Black Friday, and so later when when uh, we come to my segment, we'll talk about how how not to be a sucker in general, but very specifically <laughs> on on Tom'sHardware.com, we've got a uh, several articles live right now uh, about the best deals, the best deals on SSDs, the best deals on graphics cards, the best deals on CPUs, uh, or how to find the best deals on CPUs, and uh, obvi- and you know, we're tweeting and Facebooking and everything, uh, all the uh, important uh, deals that change, you know, often several times a day. Yeah, for sure, because that's that's one of the things that may maybe not everybody knows is the deals aren't necessarily consistent throughout the day or the weekend. Yeah, I mean, some will will be there for a while, like deals on Amazon products tend to stay. Amazon branded products yeah. uh, tend to stay good for the duration uh but other stuff it's you know there might be an a, there might be a graphics card you know there was a graphics card on sale a couple of days ago really good deal it was 160 bucks for an amd rx 580 which is which is like close to the top uh of the line a amd card um just replaced by the rx 590 which isn't that much faster uh-huh. and you know it was gone it was supposed to be on sale for four days but it was gone within like a day 
So it obviously, if other people are snapping up the stock that, that has an effect on it. Sure. Um, so, uh, but I do have one question for you before we begin. Yes, indeed. What, 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 if anything, are you shopping for this, on this black Friday season? You know, so, uh, People who followed our collision coverage live know that uh, we replaced our mobile rig recently, uh, just in time for collision, actually. And uh, we uh, did a field test with it by uh, bringing it as our only computer. (laughs) And uh, so it is way more powerful than the computer that's in here. And so I'm keeping my eye on the components that we used to build the mobile rig to uh, try and duplicate it in here because if I can do that, then uh, you and I can literally be split screen for live. And then at the end of the night, all I have to do is take the recorded version and publish it. I don't have to do any editing, which would make me a very happy person. (laughs) That's cool. So that's what I'm looking for. That's cool. I don't, uh, I don't have the budget this year to, to like, I, I got a new laptop this year. I would have loved to buy the components to like build my wife or, or myself like a new desktop. But, um, but I, I'll, I'll have much uh, narrower ambitions. I'm looking for any, any, any more deals I can find on some of the, you know, raspberry Pi stuff, you know, components, buttons, screw little screens, whatever for my projects. A, a better soldering iron would be a, would be a big big one that's on on my mind this year uh and you know a new laptop bag and uh you know a couple of accessory things like that i don't think i can make the big per- make the big purchase this year fair enough i don't know that i can either <laughs> but i will be watching for it anyway with fingers crossed and maybe just being sad at the end of it. Uh, but you know, it happens. Um, all right. Well with that, how about we get into some news? This week's Nifty Gifties on F5 Live is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Uh, obviously, Black Friday is coming in just a couple of days. You can preview the deals uh, right now in, uh, in preparation. But uh, if you're looking for a new laptop, an Xbox One S or X, there will be a number of great deals. Um, if you're looking for the new uh, Surface headphones, I have a... Uh, sh- I've seen them in action and they're pretty fantastic. Uh, Also, uh, a one month Xbox uh, Game Pass is available right now for a dollar, which is a pretty great deal. Uh, And uh, Xbox Live Gold uh, a month for a dollar. So that's a pretty great deal. And it seems like if you did 12 of those, you can get a year for $12 instead of 69 or whatever. I don't know if that's true. (laughs) Just fairly simple math. Anyway, uh, <laughs> to find out what all the deals are, to get a uh, sneak peek at the Black Friday deals and more, you can go to f5live.tv slash Microsoft. All right. Um, like we said, we'll get into some Black Friday stuff in a little while, but for right now, let's talk about the... Uh, kind of the elephant in the room as far as technology is concerned. And that is the much anticipated uh, announcement of the Samsung Galaxy F, which I will likely call the foldy phone before we're done because I usually forget the name. Uh, (laughs) We've, the whole industry has obviously known about this for months. They announced it uh, a little over a week ago. Uh, obviously we weren't on last week and um, in the time between the announcement and today the price was kind of revealed uh, semi accidentally maybe not accidentally 
by a Korean news agency. And apparently the planned price is uh, 2 million Korean won, which is the equivalent of 1,770 U.S. dollars. Now, that's a lot of money. $1,800 is a lot of money. We've been watching phones get more expensive, especially flagships, for the last two generations or so in particular. But $1,800 for a phone seems unlikely. I, I mean, It's likely that that will be the price, but it seems unlikely that that could... That that could be a success. What do you think, Avram? Uh, it's it's gonna be a gimmick. Do you remember we had those like self healing fo- bendable phones a couple of years ago? Although you could only bend them a really really tiny way, tiny amount. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, and or do you remember when we had the phones that were, you know, dual screen phones? The Kyocera Echo. You know. Yes, so, the, the Kyocera Echo looked exactly like a uh, a Nintendo DS, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's not, um, you know, there are companies try gimmicks like this, but until it makes it into the flagship phone, it's not going to be a success. Mm-hmm. And at this type of pricing, I don't see anybody buying it. It's also just not that impressive. Like when you think of a foldable phone, I think about like in Minority Report where there was like a, I think people were reading the news, the USA Today newspaper or something uh-huh. on the on the train and the whole newspaper was just like, basically, you know, could be folded just like a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. There's a... Uh... There's a video from Microsoft Research that was all about the UI design that could or would make something like that possible. That was a fascinating video to watch. I think there's some, I think there are a couple of, um, I was reading a story about this. I think, I don't think it was from Microsoft. I think it was from The Verge about different, um, like different styles of like uh, foldable, uh, foldable, UIs and in, in, um, in sci-fi and, and like what they were like, uh, I have to say it's just like, until you give me something that is like literally as thin as a piece of paper and can be folded, folded in multiple ways, not just how, not just in one spot hinge. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you basically have is a hinge. I mean, that's, that's mm-hmm. what it is. And there's a crease in it. And so it you might it might as well be a dual screen device with a hinge and it doesn't look particularly thin or light. And I guess the idea is, well, your phone can get a little bit bigger when you take it out of your pocket and unfold it. But uh, I don't think that's what people were thinking about when they thought about, you know, when they think of a foldable phone, one that is basically, you know, has a little part in the middle where you can fold, I think, mm-hmm. you know, where you can, can open and close. I mean, that sounds a lot like a two in one or something where you right. can have a hinge that you can move or, or whatever. So it's like a, it's like a Lenovo, Lenovo yoga phone. <laughs> this isn't going anywhere. This the, is the product. Yeah. yeah, this product's not going anywhere. And it, but it's not the only one. No. Um, there was another, was it some some un, some unknown co- company I've never heard of? Was it called like King Royal or something like that that also announced a, uh-huh. a, a foldable phone recently? I'm sure I'm getting the name wrong. but uh, and, and I'm sure that like, you know, once you've seen Samsung do it, you'll see LG do it. Sure, sure. Um, but it's not, it's not something it's, it's one of those, I mean, look, I appreciate the innovation. I appreciate the attempt at innovation and I hope they'll try again. Yeah. Uh, but, but this is not what we want. And the problem is to give the people what they want, which is, which is basically a newspaper made out of, I mean, 
nobody wants to read the newspaper, but uh, something that folds infinitely or, or many times and is thin like paper, you don't just need to make a screen that bends. You need to make a battery that bends uh-huh. and you need to make a CPU yeah. that bends and RAM and, and storage and like the whole SOC. And like, so great, you can make a screen that bends now, but you can't make all the things that attach to it bend. So I don't, I don't see how this is going to, this isn't really giving people what they were thinking of. Yeah. But you know, we talk, we talk at collision every year about, um, the mad scientist and how the idea on its own is almost never a success, but it might be the thing that triggers somebody else to go, you know where I could use that. Uh, and then off somebody else goes to build a thing based on the mad scientist's idea that turns into a thing that either people want or is a very specific in a, in a place or, you know, whatever. Um, so, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's what this turns into. This is Samsung's mad scientist thing. And either somebody else in Samsung or some other organization goes, I know where I could use that. And off they go. Maybe who knows? Um, I just, it just, yeah. it just seems like eighteen hundred dollars for what is essentially a gimmick device is crazy. I mean, when the when the Kiyosera Ki, I know that's not how they pronounced it, and I always hear my old rep say it in my head, and I hate how they pronounce it. Anyway, the Kiyosera Echo, uh, when that thing came out. It was one of the least expensive devices on the market. <laughs> and I think for a reason, because they knew it was weird and gimmicky. And they were just yeah. crossing their fingers that somebody would buy into their their strange idea. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah. It's 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 unfortunate and because it's probably going to to fail spectacularly, uh it's um this may discourage uh, the industry from doing it again. Yeah. Uh, but I hope that they'll try to do it when they get when they get it to a point where it's something that I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what what you would want this for. Maybe maybe you would want this for making a small tablet bigger. Like maybe you have something where it folds up to fit also, what you really want, but this will never look nice because it all have creases in it. It kind of like one that folds up like a map, like a like a road map. Uh huh. You know, so so that you could you could have like a really big, you could fold it up, and then have a really big thing in your pocket. But mm-hmm. I could never get those back together after I unfolded them anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was most people's. <laughs> That's a piece of technology that I don't miss. Also, also paper newspapers, trying to get them back, back the way that they were. Uh-huh. Once you take a section out, that's yeah, that's yeah. the end of that thing looking nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Microsoft had, had that product that was canceled after people knew about it, which was so sad. The Courier, which is kind of that idea, right? The The... It's a tablet that gets a small tablet that gets bigger. You know, when it was closed, it was like a single page of a book. But when you opened it up, it was like having a book open, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe maybe that's the place. You know, uh, what if they've got that product uh, uh, Andromeda that we keep getting teased little bits here and there about. And, you know, maybe that's the idea there is I always call it the surface courier. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like to see something like that. Um, but, you know, we've seen a lot of experimentation lately, and I mm-hmm. appreciate the effort. Yeah. I really do. Every time, because nothing's more boring than stagnation. Uh-huh. So I appreciate the efforts, especially the failed ones. Yeah. I think this is going to be a failed one for now. The other thing that's that's on the horizon that I think is going to on the horizon and on the Verizon that I think is going to be it. <laughs> A total fail is the new palm. Uh huh. Of course. 
when as soon as I heard that that thing had to be tethered to another Verizon phone, I'm like, well, that's the end of that thing being interesting. But what? I don't even know what you need it for. Like it's exactly. so it's a companion, a companion for your phone. Yeah, but it's not a wearable. Right. Well, I, you can strap it to your arm a little bit. Okay, it's, but like. It's a smart. It's, it's a smart watch in the form of a phone. It, yeah, that, the, like, made me watch, so sad. What the watches have going for them is that they're watches and they mm-hmm. they live on your wrist. This does not have that. So, yeah, exactly I, that silliness. I, yeah. So I don't know. There's. I appreciate the efforts that cut, the people are making. Yeah. Because um, we need the mad scientists. We. Yeah. We need people trying crazy things, you know, rounded cornered rectangles over and over and over eventually uh, kills an industry. So <laughs> thank goodness somebody is trying some crazy things. But at eighteen hundred dollars, I think not only is it crazy, but uh, likely a failure. This week's Pilch Point with Avram Pilch is proudly powered by Newegg. Whether you're building a new PC like I'm planning on doing or upgrading an existing one, uh, you can get all of the parts from Newegg. Whether you're looking for video cards, motherboards, processors, cases, fans, all of it. Or maybe you're just looking for uh, something like an SSD to upgrade or get an older laptop back up and running Uh to make it usable again. Uh, all of that and more, including, interestingly, an Xbox One S one terabyte console uh, with NBA 2K19 for $229 today. So that's actually a pretty good deal, even compared to the Black Friday deals that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, and to find out all of those deals and to see a uh, preview on Black Friday, you can go to pilchpoint.live slash new egg. So, Avram, it is that time of year again. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it is time for deals. Yes, it is. It is time. For, I mean, not that it's ever not time for deals, but uh, it's, we're, we're, we're in the heart of uh, Black Friday month. Let's not even talk about Black Friday as just a day because oh. it's really an entire season. Uh, and uh, it's a season where... Companies, retailers, everyone is trying to uh, fit, you know, get more revenue for the end of by the end of the year. This is their time, and so they're going to give you some really good discounts. Um, so this, so let's be honest with ourselves. I do not have too many people that I would buy. I could afford to spend a thousand dollar. I don't have anybody I could afford to spend a thousand dollar gift on or a five hundred dollar gift on Um, but um a lot of this is also a good time to buy things that you yourself need so um you know keep that in mind whenever you see the the gift deals and the gift guides and all that that a lot of what people are buying they're buying for themselves um but you know it's also a good time to look for lower cost stuff or perhaps you really are very wealthy and can afford to buy somebody a thousand dollar gift if so let's be friends anyway right. so um so the uh so where do you find the, the good deals this year well there are so many places to look but um on tomshardware.com we are we uh, are maintaining a live a uh, updated many times a day a list of the best hardware deals uh which you can find through our homepage. we also have dedicated lists of, of the best deals on SSDs uh, and on GPUs. Uh, and we have some advice for how you can tell a deal from a dud if it's not something that you you found through us that we designate as a deal. So the main thing that you need to do is obviously if you see something is on sale, do not assume that this is a good deal. Do not assume that this is a better price than you could have gotten before. The Black Friday season. Do not assume that it is a better price than you could get on another website. Uh, so, if you uh, are looking at Amazon, 
uh, the, there is a tool. I say this every every so often, but uh-huh. for those who have not heard it before, called Camel Camel Camel. It is a website, camelcamelcamel.com, but there is also a an ext- a Chrome extension called the Camelizer. Uh, that when you are on an article page for anything on um, when you're on an article page for anything that's on Amazon, you can click the camel little camel icon and you can see, hey, this is what the price history was of this product. So you can see, is this the cheapest this product has really ever been? And how long has it been this cheap? Was it has it been the same price for like, Four weeks. Well, maybe that's a price that's good for you, but it's not particular. It's not a. It doesn't sound like a time limited sale. Um, another um, another place where you can find um, where they have a bunch of uh, historical price data is, is PC Part Picker uh, for components and. Uh, but even if you're the, the deal that you're looking at is not on Amazon itself, is on Newegg, is on CDW, is, is on um, Walmart. If it's a uh, chances are that the same product exists on Amazon and you can use the Camelizer to see what the price history was there to see whether this is cheaper, even if it's on, say, Newegg, is this cheaper than this has ever been on Amazon or is now on Amazon? So, um, so that's a good way to, to tell to tell okay is this actually good for for what it is good compared to itself but then the other question is is this just worth my buying so here are the things that you should be looking that are going to be good deals this year and here are the things that are not some of the things that are not uh, laptops will probably you can get some good deals particularly from Dell and Dell and Lenovo uh, you will probably find find some great deal some great deals there if those because those companies sell direct and they usually have some pretty good um, some pretty good coupons. Uh, if you're looking for uh, obviously there's going to be a variety of deals on peripherals through the major sites like Amazon, Newegg, and Best Buy. Um, but if you're looking for components, um, you got to be really careful with the CPUs and GPUs. There's probably the latest generation stuff is not going to go on sale. If you want uh, a new NVIDIA RTX 2080 card or 2070 card, it's not going to go on a sale. If those things are barely staying in stock now, Uh if you want a new Intel ninth gen uh, core CPU or a new AMD Threadripper, uh, the latest Threadripper 2000 series, you probably won't see any any reduction in price on those at all. Probably not. What you will see is lower prices on things that are a little bit older, uh, such as an eighth gen core CPU or a um, or a slightly older graphics card like a 1080 or a 1070 that's now being replaced um, could possibly uh, be a good deal. And of course, we've seen some really fantastic deals, especially on AMD stuff. Uh, AMD RX 580 and RX 570 cards are going on big uh, graphics cards are, are on big sales. We're seeing the 580 cards as low as $160, um, which is fantastic because they're normally well over $200. Um, we're, and AMD CPUs are also an area where you could see some good savings. Uh, most likely, you'll see you'll definitely see a lot more savings on the older Ryzen CPUs on the ones that are the 1000 series, the newer 2000 series, you may, you may see some deals. Um, so those are the kind of CPU where I look for my CPUs and GPUs. Obviously you're going to see a fair amount of deals on other types of components like Ram and power supplies. And the big, the big thing, the big uh, deal this year, uh, is going to be storage SSDs and flash memory. There is a glut. Uh, there is somewhat of a glut of flash memory. Also, with the new um, tr- triple level 3D uh, NAND flash, the price the prices of SSDs were dropping by themselves. Now that you're coming into the holiday season, we're seeing ludicrous prices. Uh, 
I would not be surprised if at some point soon we're gonna we see a one terabyte SSD for like ninety bucks. Uh, we are definitely seeing five reputable, very reputable, like Samsung, the leading brand, five hundred gig SSDs for seventy two dollars. That's for the SATA drive. If you want uh, the faster NVMe dri- NVMe PCIe drives, if your computer supports one, uh, are are still more money. Uh, however, just today there was a deal which is no longer, which was only there for a few hours, uh, for ninety nine dollars for a five hundred gigabyte Western Digital uh, NVMe drive. So, um, so prices are, are it's a really good time to buy uh, to buy SSDs and then subsequently other forms of storage like mechanical hard drives and uh, USB flash drives. But does anybody need one of those? Is, is, does everybody just get them for free? I mean, like, they seem to come in, in Cracker Jacks now. Um, and, I mean, as a, as a journalist, I get I get a lot of press kits on them, so I have an entire drawer actually right here of, uh, of these things. These are all press kits that I've gotten on USB flash, so I will never need one again in my life probably. Yeah. But... Um, but uh, you know, there are some who people who do need to to buy them. Uh, so, but other things I'm looking out for these are deals on micro SD cards. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I could use. I would actually like to find a, a good deal on like maybe a five or a five pack of smaller of like 16 gig cards that I can use for for different Raspberry Pi projects. Um, so that's. Uh, so I think that's where you're going to see a lot of a lot of action this year. Um, so uh, that's those are kind of the major things to look out for. And I really invite folks to check out uh, our our up to date list of deals and buying advice on uh, Tom'sHardware.com. Excellent. Uh, I am while you've been talking before. Uh... Before we got started on F5 Live earlier, you asked me what I was looking for this year. And I am literally on Camel, Camel, Camel right now, looking at the uh, price history on on uh, some of the components <laughs> that we use to build our mobile broadcast rig. So I love that site, and it's interesting. They also do hotel prices, but that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Big banner at the top I've never seen before. Anyway, um... So you've got um, a number of uh, breakout articles on uh, on like GPUs and general tech and all yeah, kinds. So a number of guides, right? Not just yes, not have, just a single one. Yes, we have. Uh, well, so we've got about seven different articles on this. Plus, anytime something is. Anything that's a really big deal, we may do a separate article just on that deal. So there's a a bar on top of all of our pages uh, listing some of the deals. Plus, if you're wondering what to buy because you're shopping for somebody else, uh, we also have a gift guide. I shouldn't neglect that. That actually tells you what sorts of things to look for for different kinds of people in your life. Tech enthusiasts, kids uh, kids who want a STEM kit, uh, you know, makers. Uh, stocking stuffers, you know, inexpensive stuff. Uh, so we have that too, uh, since you may not just want a good deal, but actually figure out what to buy somebody. Um, so uh, I definitely encourage people to to check out our check out tomshardware.com for that. Very cool. Well, I even I will be checking that out uh, in a little while because I am interested to see if you guys have listed any of the things I'm looking for. So. That's absolutely perfect, and I always like seeing uh, your STEM gift list, so I look forward to uh, to that. So, As always, Avram, thank you. To those of you who are watching, uh, definitely check out those lists and uh, have a good and safe uh, Black Friday if you're uh, crazy enough to try and go out. Yeah, well, this is the overriding message: don't go out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't don't go out. I'm not saying don't shop. Don't go out. There's really no reason to go out. There are plenty of fantastic deals online. Whether you want yeah. 
uh, whether you want electric, whether you want computer stuff or electronics or, or anything, basically anything, there's really no reason in, in 2018 to go out to the store. Yes, there'll probably be some ridiculous off-brand TV that's a ridiculous deal at Walmart, and they'll have five of them, and people will will run it, will bump into each other, get injured going for it. But that kind of stuff is ridiculous. The best deals are always online, and not and you and the one thing you could say is not only will you not inconvenience yourself, but you won't waste nearly as much time. What if you go there and the thing that you want isn't there? If you're online, either it's there or it's not. You know. Yeah, very, very true. Uh, that's always the worst is getting to a a place to go get something and finding out. You know, they had it an hour ago, now they don't. And obviously, that particular problem is extra prevalent <laughs> during uh, during Black Friday. So, definitely no good. Uh, well, anyway, as always, Avram, we appreciate it. And uh, we will see you back next week. This week's Extra Life on F5 Live is proudly powered by Razer. All the accessories you need to up your game on PC or console uh, is available from Razer. Whether you're looking for a new keyboard and mouse, because the Xbox One just brought on keyboard and mouse support, and now you need one for in there. Or you are thinking about doing a broadcast, and you need a great new microphone, or a webcam, or even a ring light. Uh, Razer has got it all with a number of uh, deals going on uh, every day and especially obviously this coming weekend and you can find out all of those deals and find the products by going to f5live.tv slash Razer apologize for that abrupt music cut um, so for a number of years uh, we've been saying on the show that uh, the team that puts on E3 is has been uh, shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, they have done a number of things to alienate the people that they need the most. Um, when we did uh, E3 with uh, Avram's wonderful colleague Cherie a number of years ago... Um, while we had fun outside of E3, the way we were actually treated by the convention was unbelievably negative. Um, the, the press conferences were all great. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo all treated us great, but E3 themselves did not. And it's, it's a refrain that we've heard time and again from other people that, that E3 is just kind of chaos. And... Um, What we've seen over the last couple of years has been started with them deciding, you know what, we don't we've never technically let fans into the thing, but we've always let fans into the thing Uh, this year. No. Uh, And then they said everybody has to have the same booth, (laughs) which was ridiculous. And that was the beginning of the revolt from the exhibitors we've seen over the last couple of years activision um decide not to have an official press conference or an official uh presence but they kind of did they rented a church down the street and did a press conference um nintendo has not had official press conferences the last couple of years but they've still had a presence on the floor um we had in 2016 there were a number of of uh, high profile companies missing uh, EA and Activision skipped the show floor, but EA hosted a thing next door. Activision still paired up with Sony. Disney and Wargaming were not there at all. But what we've never seen is one of the big three say no thank you until now. Uh, Sony announced this week that PlayStation 
will have zero presence at and during E3 2019. They will not be on the floor. They will not have a press conference. And the PlayStation experience that usually happens during that time has been canceled. Do you think so? E3 has been. What do you think? Do you think something will replace E3? Do you think there's something else that rivals it right now? Or do you think the industry just doesn't need it anymore? Um, doesn't need a show anymore? I, I think in reality, this is. I, okay, so this one is interesting. I think that what's happening here is a little bit of we're tired of E3 itself um, and we don't want to give them any extra press. So we're just we're not even going to have the PlayStation experience. But I also think that like what Microsoft said a couple of years ago with CES, where the timing of the show just doesn't match up with our with our product life cycle anymore. Um, I think that's probably the case for, for Sony here because the, the show is at a weird time. You know, it's, it's like in the middle of the summer, which is what games are actually going to come out this holiday. Well, we're pretty sure it'll be these, but you're going to be disappointed when at least 10% of them get pushed to March of the next year. (laughs) Because we're just not sure how far along the games are going to be. It's at a weird time. Um, you know, there's there's GDC, which I think is quickly replacing E3 as the game show. There's also uh, TGS, the Tokyo Game Show, which I think is a more exciting show. And then you've got PAX which is for the, by fans for fans, which has kind of replaced the thing that E3 decided we're not all that interested in anymore. So I think, you know, I think there's, there's definitely that, like it's split up amongst a couple of other shows, but I would not be surprised if we started to see, you know, Nintendo does their <coughs> Nintendo directs on a regular basis, um, regardless of what show's happening. I wouldn't be surprised if if Sony and Microsoft started to do something similar. I mean, Microsoft's been with Major Nelson. Microsoft's been doing that for years. That's literally like his primary job with the company is to be the Microsoft equivalent of a Nintendo Direct. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing just like Microsoft does their hardware announcements solo whenever they're ready to do one. I wouldn't be surprised if if we started to see that kind of thing here too. You know, we see it in the mobile world, right? Samsung does a big event to to unveil the the foldy phone, but you know that they're going to make all the all the actual availability and price announcements at Mobile World Congress in February for a really a likely release in March. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised if if the game industry started to go that same way because we've seen it in most of the rest of the tech industry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, CES in in many ways is de- is declining mm-hmm. because I mean, I'm a big fan. Like, well, I'm not a big fan of going to Las to Las Vegas like a week after New Year, but yeah, but I mean, you know it's good to have so much news and information coming out of one place Yeah, because the companies that don't need these shows are the com- are, are precisely the ones that you need to be there for the other companies to, to shine. Yeah. So like, you know, the best stuff at CES is when you go into the, so you see all these in the sands and you see all these startups, uh, or smaller companies yeah. that you know they couldn't hold their own press event and have people come from all over the world to see them. Sure, you know there, though there are you know startup events like Collision. It's the the focus, the the sheer volume and size of CES is what makes news coming out of CES even for the little guys possible. Yeah, because you know, so, yeah is. Is uh, somebody like CNET or The Verge, 
going to spend a whole lot of time talking to the little guys. No, they tend to be busy with, with the big ones, but they're, which is okay. That's why they're there. But, you know, you and I get to go walk the halls of the sands and bring the seemingly bizarre stuff, the things that, that a lot of publications would look and go, I'm sorry, is that a um, an underwater fish camera? Okay. I interviewed two of them at CES 2018. Right. So, <laughs> so like, th- these shows are, are valuable, but if, you know, we've seen companies that, w- that at one point de- uh, exhibited CES no longer do it, right? Like, is... Uh, Microsoft is our great example. I mean, they do... Because theirs was... Their exit was so public because they had the opening keynote. Right. So Microsoft, <laughs> don't they still have a booth or something though? Um, they do not have a Microsoft booth. They team up with other uh, brands. Oh. Right. So, so, but the thing you're probably seeing is they have the entire second floor of uh, meeting rooms down at the other end of the strip at the. Oh right. Okay. So. Wherever so that is. Microsoft is basically pulled out of it. Mm-hmm. There are some other com- like you don't see Google has no presence there except this year. Uh, they had a huge presence well, oh, this the- year for the first time ever. Ah, they had their okay. big pavilion that got uh, flooded uh, this year out in the courtyard. That that oh. big three story building that took them uh, three and a half weeks to build, and uh, they were closed the first day because it flooded. Okay. <laughs> Apple has. I don't think Apple ever participated in Correct. CES. Correct. Um, certainly not. Not in the ten years that I've been going. So, it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't mean to get off a tangent about CES, but I think there are a lot of companies that feel like, oh, we're so big, we don't need right to be part of somebody else's show. Right. Uh, I mean, Microsoft has its own events. They have. Mm-hmm. They have build. Uh, they have bill. They have. They yeah. can hold a press conference and get people to fly in from all over. So, right. But having having some sort of event like this, where where a company like NCSoft, right, who everybody knows, we all know the name NCSoft, but we're never quite sure what they're working on. Yeah. <laughs> and if they were to hold a press conference, who was who's going to show up? Korean publications, maybe, but you know that's that's kind of the extent of who would show up to a an NCSoft press conference because that's what we associate with with the company. But then you know they put out a a game like WildStar. If it hadn't been for them having a press conference at E3, you know it may not have even hit the market, let alone survived a couple of years. So having some sort of a way to do this. I think is important, but I do think that E3 is not going to be the place where it happens uh, in just a couple of years. I think we'll see probably GDC uh, take over because we're seeing a lot more of it. Um, maybe the Tokyo Game Show picking up some, but you know, the the uh, sheer number of video game companies that set up a small booth so that people can come play, fans can come play the game at PAX. That might be the most valuable of all, honestly, because you get more people talking about it on social media, getting excited about, hey, I just played this game nobody's ever heard of. Uh, <laughs> you, you might gain some traction that way. So I have a feeling that's the way it'll go, and uh, it is entirely E3's own fault um, for alienating everybody who once cared about the event. So that's my little rant on E3. This week's news from the tubes on F5 Live is proudly powered by Riff Tracks. Make fun of movies or, better yet, let the professionals do it for you. Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and Kevin Murphy, the former stars of Mystery Science Theater 3000, whose uh, holiday uh, uh, stream, or a holiday, uh, what do you call it? Marathon is going on right now. Uh, 
are doing what they do best, creating commentaries for Hollywood blockbusters and B-movies like Trucker's Woman. I, I don't know what to do with these. Uh, the way it works is for a couple of dollars, you download the MP3, play it along with your DVD, Netflix, Amazon, wherever the movie happens to live, and laugh. Some of the, uh, the more bizarre ones, you might be able to download uh, the entire movie with the riff over top of it. Uh, but they also do uh, short films, industry insider films, like The Importance of Springs, or those weird educational films you watched in elementary school, and they make fun of those as well. To find out all of the short films and all of the uh, full-length features that are available, you can go to f5live.tv slash tracks with an X. All right, so um, I know we've been talking about them a lot lately, but that's because they keep uh, putting their own foot in their mouth. Facebook. Uh, a New York Times report came out this week detailing the bizarre relationship between the social networking giant and a um, counterintelligence firm. <laughs> called uh, Definers Public Affairs. What this organization does is they essentially go find information about the enemy, whatever that may be, uh, and uh, release it to undermine what they're doing, to, to point fingers at somebody so you're not looking at me, uh, a little bit of all of that. In this case, uh, the probably the most prominent thing that that definers did in relation to Facebook, or as I suppose a contractor of Facebook, is leading up to um, Sheryl Sandberg's uh, testimony before Congress in September, I think. Uh, they did a pretty hefty counterintelligence campaign where they went and they found all of the money that either Facebook or Facebook employees had given to any of the members of the committee who were going to be asking questions. Uh, they also went and uh, checked every one of the senators' uh, websites to find what tracking technology they were using on the websites, and they distributed all of that information to the rep to the to reporters so that they could then say if they got too like harsh with with uh with her they could go see but hypocrites cuz they're doing it too uh they also um and i'm <laughs> i'm uh, pretty impressed with this to be perfectly honest they secretly petitioned the commission to also request that Google be there uh, because of similar practices, but they made it happen too late for Google to actually show up so that a placard sat next to her that said Google uh, with nobody sitting in the chair, which was designed to make Google look bad so that they could go, no, see, but they didn't even care enough to be here. This is... Obviously, par for the course when it comes to politics, but in fact, this organization, Definers Public Affairs, is normally a political counterintelligence organization that helped Facebook out kind of off-season, I guess. But it's this kind of like active behavior is unusual, especially for a tech company. I, can you think of... Any other example of this, Avram? Nope. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it's, it, you know, their behavior, Facebook's behavior is like, it's more like they, pro they probably hurt themselves more by trying to discredit people than by actually whatever was going on. I mean, it's, Agreed it's there. really, it's, I mean, it, 
I mean, they could they could have just come out and said something. They could. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand Facebook. They could come out and pretend to be. They could come out and be more like uh, Twitter, uh, where all kinds of crap goes on on Twitter, but Twitter almost is almost transparent about the fact that they don't care. Um, right. I mean, yeah. they do, they do eliminate some stuff, but you can really tell that Twitter is really begrudgingly, um, removing things like Russian bots. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Facebook, instead of trying to kind of take the moral high ground or whatever, they could just say like, look, we don't, we don't care. I mean, it, that's not good for their reputation either. But sure. I sure. Mean, they could just say, look, we don't, we're not in the business of defining what the truth is. We're not in the business right. of defining what, uh, who is and isn't a valid user. Uh, you know, you don't have to come, you, nobody's required to use our website. Right. So like now maybe that would, maybe that would hurt them. I, I will say this. There's Facebook is, Facebook is in many ways a useful tool, but it's one that anybody else could do and others have done. Yeah, yeah. So so Google Plus is, you know, unfortunately failed because I liked it. I liked it just fine. But somebody else could come along and create and if if Facebook's reputation is harmed, there's other social media things out there and social media is a very Facebook as it is Facebook and Twitter have lasted a long time all things considered for sure I mean I mean because social networks are really all about like who's on them and gaining critical mass and so once people decide that Facebook is not cool anymore which in a lot of ways it's already yeah. long past not being cool yeah. anymore I you know teenagers you'll find a lot of them don't have a Facebook account. They'll have Instagram or Snapchat, but you know, a lot of them don't have Facebook at all as, as a, as evidence of <laughs> their slide from cool. Ah, uh, but Facebook owns Instagram in Instagram. Yes, indeed. So, so, you know, so, but somebody, somebody very well could come up with a, with a different social network that all, they just need whoever is the cool, whoever the cool yeah. people of the day are yep. to embrace it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, what what did it take to sort of to turn to make Twitter a thing? Was it just Shaquille O'Neal tweeting on there? I mean, there were a couple of people who like famous people who yeah. took to Twitter. Yeah. And then that just got the ball rolling. So indeed. And who were the I the idea that. A lot of the uh, news reporters were on there and that they had their Twitter handle in their lower third on like the big TV networks, uh, I think helped it gain traction as well because they're celebrities in their own right. And uh, people felt like it was a way to interact with the news. And I think that that added a whole new like group of people into it. Yeah, well, that there's uh, now I I don't know exactly who's going to come along and and do whatever this next thing is, but yeah. uh, somebody will. This, but and maybe this next thing will not exactly have all the same features as Facebook. It may not be something where you see a feed of people's stuff. I don't know, but uh, Facebook was different enough for MySpace that people made the leap. You know, yeah. And MySpace was different enough from High Five that people made the leap. You know, it'll fads come and go. Facebook's has been way longer than the previous ones. But somebody will unseat it. That is the way the tech industry works. You know, at one point, uh, Palm, Blackberry and Motorola were the top of the the smartphone industry. And today we literally made fun of Palm's most recent device on this show. <laughs> but they, that isn't even really them, is it? No. It's Cause the name, somebody just bought the name. Yeah. Uh, actually, interestingly, uh, TCL owns the, the brand. 
the same company that owns the rights to make BlackBerry devices. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just it's just another <laughs> brand, sort of like Acer that owns Gateway and uh huh, and E Machines. Although, um, although interestingly, uh, while TCL owned the Palm brand, they did not make this device, uh, which makes it even more bizarre of a thing. Anyway, but yeah, you know, just because you're at the 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 top of the hill today doesn't mean somebody's not going to do something to knock you down because they will. It it always happens. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a huge black eye for uh huh for. Uh, a huge uh, black eye for the executive team. And for a there. company who's already been losing the fight they've been in, this black eye is certainly the most prevalent. Although, what does losing mean? Like, are fewer people really using Facebook? Or are a lot of people are a lot of people logging off? Uh, I mean, there was actually uh, a wave this week of uh, of user account closures it'll be interesting to see on their next conference call exactly what that what that turned into uh, i think it's more like you're more likely to see passive uh unsubscribing than active yeah i, I think you're more likely to see people cut back on how much they're using it and uh -huh. move to elsewhere than to just kill their account uh, it's very hard to kill your face. I mean, it's not very hard technically, I guess, but you know, I get messages from people on Facebook messenger. They really managed to, it's, uh, it's how you and I prepare for the show. Yeah. <laughs> I, right. I end up using it way more than I should because it's not like I would, I would kind of rather be using a company that I think of it more as a communications tech company than mm -hmm. as a social media company to yeah. do that kind of stuff. Like, that's why I kind of like the idea of Google better because I kind of more, more trust trust Google with my, uh, you know, stuff than a company who's basically, oh I don't know, a social entertainment company. Um, I more wow. I kind of more trust Microsoft or Google or you know, yeah, that's to, that's fascinating because you know, regular viewers of the show know that. I'm like famously distrustful of of Google, but saying what you just said, yeah, I think I trust Google more than I trust Facebook with information. And that yeah, is I've, terrifying. I mean, it's not to say that Google is perfect by any means, but I kind of trust them more because I feel like I don't know. I know Google does I know Facebook does some like business stuff or whatever, but it just sort of seems like and maybe this is all perception. But it's I kind of, for example, I kind of trust, say, Verizon more than I trust the cable company to provide me Internet. Why? Why? It's just a feeling that like that I have that like the cable company is an entertainment company. Huh. And so when they're giving you Internet, they maybe they don't think it's as important to keep it up because, oh, you're just, you know, shopping and surfing the Web. It's just entertainment. Right. We don't need to keep it. It's not mission critical. Whereas, whereas, you know, a company like Verizon or AT&T or, or whatever, they're, hey, they, you know, they have business clients. They know that like. And they're a communication that, company first. That these communications have to be to be up their utility, huh. not, in it, not, not, into, not just, you know, a fun, nice to have that you could live without for a while. So I don't know. Maybe that's, that's just. That's interesting. Well, um, uh, and it might be location based because uh, Tampa was the first uh, public test of high speed cable Internet uh, in the country. And so we've been we've been dealing with cable Internet as the primary high speed service here since it happened. So for me, I think of. <laughs> I think of our cable company as the place, but only because they were the first. <laughs> and so that's that's an interesting an interesting situation because of course the idea that Verizon and AT and T are communications companies makes way more sense <laughs> than the thing yeah. that's in my head. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just 
it's just, I don't know. It's yeah. just a thought. Like, who would you who would you trust better to provide you with a with a technical service, Disney or IBM? Like, yeah, you know. yeah. Fair enough. That's interesting choices. But yeah, that yeah. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not gonna buy a color copier from Disney. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. In the in the end, in the end, they can all. They can all screw up and all do for sure. All do terrible. All do terrible things. So yeah, fair enough. <laughs> this week's DRM not included on F Five Live is proudly powered by Amazon Prime. You know your basic features and a. C- one of them is going to likely come in handy for you this weekend. You get free shipping, sometimes two day, sometimes same day. Uh, in some places, two hour shipping. Uh, and you get that for being a Prime subscriber, but there's a whole lot more to it. Uh, Amazon Prime Music. I literally had a conversation last weekend with a number of people who had no idea that they got Amazon uh, Prime Music, that they got millions of tracks available for free. Uh, there's also Amazon Prime Video, which has a number of uh, original and syndicated TV, movies, documentaries, uh, all available as part of your subscription. You also get unlimited photo storage. And my favorite feature, which is uh, Twitch Prime, where you can get one free Twitch subscription uh, to a channel. Uh, per month, which you could use to subscribe to us if you would like to, Plug Hits Live. Um, or if, uh, speaking of uh, Twitch, uh, Ernie, I'm sorry, I did not see uh, you. My chat room seems to have crashed. Um, I'll talk to you in a second. Um, but you also get free games. You get free games every month, just like PlayStation Network or Xbox Live. You get free games just for being a Prime subscriber. Uh, so, Definitely uh, get your games. They're yours. Play them. There's a lot of fun ones. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, now would be a great time to uh, to pick up a subscription. Or if you would like to buy a subscription for somebody else, that and all of these other features can all be found at f5live.tv slash prime. One thing that I wish that uh, Twitch did was tell me when... This message came in. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, all right. I wanted to end with a weird, very weird story uh, to send us off into the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, China just uh, announced and unveiled a what they're calling the world's first AI anchor person. That's probably not what they're calling it because they speak another language. But let's let's go with that. It's the world's first AI reporter. Um, it is terrifying. If you've seen the video, <laughs> I absolutely hate it. It's um, just real enough. It's in that uh, that play, the Uncanny Valley, right? If you know what that is, it's. It's the place where um, electronic things go from being so cartoony they're fine and they're not quite so realistic that you're okay with them. They're just creepy. Uh, And like the CGI stormtroopers, right? They're not quite uh, real and they come across weird. And that's what we've got here They're not quite real. Their mouth doesn't quite line up with the audio. And um, I watched a couple of videos that were released, and I hate it. But that's neither here nor there. That was going to be inevitable. Uh, The thing that I find most interesting is um, they're not AI. Uh, They're actually not AI at all. They used a machine learning algorithm to watch some videos to um, 
create a library of mannerisms because what they did was they digitized two of their actual on-air human beings, which I think makes it creepier. Uh, so they digitized two real people, and so they they had this this machine learning algorithm watch mannerisms at, to build a library for animation, but they're still reading a script that's being written by and fed to them by human beings. So the reporters themselves aren't actually AI. The animation uh, engine is kind of using an AI generated thing. Anyway, it's weird. We, <laughs> we... Wait, isn't this just a really good version of extra normal? I don't know. You know what you know what extra normal is, right? Um I'm going to. I think it was called extra normal. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry. They 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 had this thing which I think it still exists where you could just make your own cartoons and the character you just write the script and the characters would move their mouths and a lot of them looked like bunnies or weird Holy other things. Holy cow, Avram. Yes. What? Absolutely I know what we're talking about. I had totally forgotten about that. Yes. It is absolutely that, except that it it uses, you know, past videos of a human being to recreate that human being. But yeah, it's it's nothing more interesting than extra normal. Thank you for that. Well, all I can say is you got to uh, here's a here is a deep cut for you. You got to make sure that the you put Albert Finney on the case. Uh, uh, has anybody in our listening audience or Scott ever heard of the movie Looker from 1981? No. Crickets? Ah, what a prescient film. And they showed it on HBO every five minutes when I was a kid. <laughs> now, forgot now forgotten. In the movie... Every five uh, minutes, that's funny. In the movie, um, Albert Finney plays a plastic surgeon who is like doing plastic surgery on all these uh, women who are models or whatever. And then coincidentally, there's this company that is scanning, that is using full body scanners to scan in the models. And then someone is going around murdering them after they were scanned. And then when they're scanned, they can make them appear on TV saying whatever, the, in, in, in movies, uh, doing whatever they want. What, uh, but then also there's this plot about how James Coburn is going to use like hypnotism through the eyes of these characters to make people vote for him. Or I, There's all kinds of stuff going on there. But the point is, just as people remember Minority Report, not for the actual plot of Minority Report, which isn't that great, but for all the like the, the technical predictions, the technical yeah, yeah. prediction in Looker is that you'll be able to scan somebody in like using a 3D scanner. Uh, and then recreate them digitally doing whatever you want, that's kind of come to pass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the, the companies involved in this are one of the Chinese search engines. Um, I'm not going to embarrass myself and try and pronounce it. Um, and um, obviously the, the news company itself, but they want to be able to expand on this technology, not just be able to digitize and I suppose fire their on-air talent. And I'm not going to deal with the idea of them being able to say false things with a straight face. Um, we'll put all that aside. But what they, what they talked about wanting to be able to do is, uh, and I think this is unbelievably creepy, uh, to be able to digitize uh, you so your digital you can uh, read to your son. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've seen this. That that idea is also not new. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fact, but but they they have the the ability to uh, do it uh, yesterday, which is okay. So Barnes and Noble uh, on their Nook tablets i don't know if it's still on the nook app had like a read to me feature for some for some kids books where you could actually have the parent recording 
recording it and uh-huh. then the child could go through and like the parent's voice would be reading to them. Sure. Um, it's it, for I me, object- for me, it's the, the visual, the like weird, not quite real visual representation that I feel might actually screw a kid up. Like that's my fear there. Oh, well, I think, I think that would might screw a kid up, but I, I, I actually I think that the I have mixed feelings about the about what Barnes and Noble was doing too, because if it becomes a situation where parents are using it as a crutch so that they don't have to actually sit there and read to their yeah. kids, then then you know yeah. then that sucks. On the other hand, if there's some really compelling reason why, you know, maybe maybe mom or dad is in, is in the military or something right. and they're away and this is a way for their child to like have, uh, you know, the feeling of them there, then like that's, uh, that's interesting, but it has to have authenticity and like uh-huh. taking a scan of somebody is not, um, is not really authenticity. Yeah. It's which is different. Uh, at collision last year, we interviewed a company called caribou, which is the whole read to me thing, but it's live. It's it's so that you can actually interact with the the family member who may not be in the room with you. Grandma lives in another state and maybe grandma wants to be able to read a book with the grandkid. And, you know, the kid can put their finger on the book and and like touch the words as they go through, which is a pretty common thing for kids as they're learning to read. And it shows up on grandma's side that they're doing it all, you know, which makes it an actually interactive <laughs> With a real person experience versus um, a pre-recorded audio thing or a very creepy, not terribly realistic looking, uh, not human being. Yeah, I mean, well, this kind of technology is inevitable, Mm -hmm. uh, but but it also forget this use case of it, because you know what? This kind of cuts through the the um well this is yet another reason why you shouldn't watch tv news now <laughs> granted granted this is this is uh china which has a, a very different uh view of free speech than uh than than other countries than some other countries like like the one that we're in but um but nevertheless what they're really calling attention to is the fact that everybody's just reading off a teleprompter anyway. Uh huh. They're all just reading off a teleprompter anyway. And the thing that the people who run news hate the most is when the anchors don't, don't just read off the teleprompter and go ad lib. So good news. We've got an anchor who will never read off the, who will never, uh, go off script. Yeah. Which is no fun because, you know, TV news gaffes are one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> yes, the gaffes, are, the gaffes are, are the only thing that is. I mean, that's why we have the Internet and we could just read stuff and read articles at our own pace. And like, uh, I don't know. I don't I don't like uh, I don't really like watching TV news anymore. Um, so it's uh this I, I wouldn't be surprised if this happens in the U.S. too. But on the other hand, that kind of thing has ended up backfiring before, he, at least here. Do you remember? I don't know if they still do it. Do you remember they had that whole controversy about Jack Radio? It was a radio station with no DJs. Uh huh. Yeah, there were a couple of those companies. It was like a robotic DJ or mm-hmm. whatever, and people people were upset about it. And you know, bring back the real DJs. And uh-huh. For now, they people want have pe- real DJs. Today, people want people. You know, but that doesn't mean that it'll be that way in five years. Well, I mean, I think the bottom line though is, if you, if what people were coming to it for was a person, then let's just stop pretending, and let's just stop pretending, and just have people like you going to read off the teleprompter then just give me the words, you know, or, or, or you want to hear it, do a text to speech. I mean, yes, it would be good to have human being like having human beings bring something to the table. But if, if really our news 
if really when you all you really are paying somebody to do is read the teleprompter, then they're just faking faking humanity anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that is our show. Uh, for those of you who joined us live, thank you for doing so. Uh, if you didn't join us live, that is okay. If you would like to in the future, you can go to f5live.tv slash join us and uh, chat with us in the studio. Uh, so long as our chat rooms don't crash, which apparently one of them did this evening. And I apologize if you were watching on Twitch and tried to get a hold of us. Uh, apparently the chat room crashed. It has just gone white on my screen. Um, technology, huh? Uh, um, so... Obviously, Thanksgiving this week, uh, since we've been talking about it all night, uh, you'll want to uh, stay tuned to uh, Tom's Hardware, who will be keeping you up to date on the best deals that they can find and the ones that are definitely worth it. Um, we will also be publishing in the next, hopefully in the next week or so, our um, episode of the 3000 Brigades uh, W3KB Radio, which we recorded at anime ey last weekend and it is hysterical i can't wait for you guys to hear it it was so much fun um and i guess with that if you're in the u.s have a uh, have a great holiday and if you're not uh, have a great week <laughs> and on behalf of the staff that's not here i'm scott i'm avram and we will see you guys back next week ciao